Hey everyone, welcome to the another video. In this video, we will discuss about the branches of geography and these branches of geography are classified under the NCRT of India. We will see the detailed description of the branches of geography that have been classified by the NCERT. So let's switch over to the main content of the video. So in a first, geography can be divided into two parts or it can be studied under two approaches. And this approach is systematic approach and the regional approach. So when we uh, begin to study a subject, then it becomes necessary to classify the subject matter of that particular subject. And if we do this, it becomes very easy to understand and to study that particular subject. Similarly, in geography, there are several classifications given by other geographers and other thinkers also. But the most accepted classification of geography is systematic geography and regional geography. So let's quickly see about systematic geography. What is systematic geography? So first of all, systematic geography is also known as a general geography or universal geography. And systematic geography derives its name from the word system. System means studying a particular thing in, in an order, okay, or in a particular way, in a particular system. So studying the elements of geography, the laws, the theories, the concepts, the methods, the techniques, the history of that particular subjects can be termed as the systematic part of that subject. And on the other hand, regional, when we apply these systematic things, these laws, theories, methods, approaches, techniques, in a particular region, in a particular area or in a particular zone, this becomes the subject matter of the regional geography. So systematic as well as regional geography, okay, the, these both parts of geography were popularized in Germany. The systematic geography was popularized by Alexander von Humboldt, whereas the regional geography was popularized by his contemporary Karl Ritter. So when there are two approaches to study a particular subject, then the dualism or dichotomy starts in that particular subject. Like in geography also, there are several dichotomies or dualism. Like the first dualism exists between the systematic geography and regional geography. This was firstly pointed out by Bernhard Virenius in his book Geographia Generalis. So not going to that part, uh, moving back to the geography part. So if we try to define the systematic approach and regional approach in one definition or to be very precisely defined or in an easy way. So we can say that if we take one phenomena or one concept or one law, one theory, one approach, one uh, system and we study that system or we study that phenomena in a generalized way all over the globe, all over the earth, then it is the systematic part of the, the of geography. Like if we take over the volcano part, then if we study what are volcanoes, what do, uh, are the types of volcanoes, how volcanoes are caused and where are the volcanoes found all over the globe. So this is the systematic part of that subject. But if we study a particular phenomena in a particular region, or we can say if we study all the phenomena that we have studied earlier in systematic geography in a small region or in a particular region, it is termed as the regional part of that subject. Giving you an example, if we study all the volcanoes, all the earthquakes, all the landforms, all the climate, all the soil and all the natural vegetation all across the globe, then it is a systematic part. And if we study all its phenomena in a particular region, likewise India or France or Nepal or Japan, then it is a regional geography. Or we can take the small regions also like a district, like a city or like a village, then it is the part of that regional part or regional geography. So likewise, systematic and regional approaches, these are also very vast. So there are several subdivisions in this systematic geography as well as this regional geography. So firstly, we'll take over the branches or the subdivisions of the systematic part or the systematic approach of geography. So now, systematic geography is divided into four subdivisions. First is physical geography, second is principles and philosophy, third is methods and techniques and fourth is human geography. So starting with the physical geography portion, the so physical geography portion is the that part of systematic geography that studies the physical aspects of the earth, that is land, soil, water, air, okay. So this comes under the physical geography part of the systematic geography and physical geography is now subdivided into several parts, majorly four parts that is geomorphology, climatology, hydrology and soil geography. So geomorphology takes its roots from the subject of geology. Geomorphology studies about the landforms, about the earth, earth surface and etc. 
Climatology is that branch of uh, geography that takes into account the climatic aspects, the winds, the pressure belts, the air masses, the regional classification of climate and etc. Third branch is hydrology. Hydrology takes into the water related aspects of the earth surface. For example, the river, the lakes, the ponds, the oceans, the seas and etc. Soil geography, as the name suggests, it takes into account the soil aspects of the earth surface. That is the types of soils, the uh, terminologies related to soil and the regional distribution and the division of soils in the world or in a particular region. So this was the four branches subdivision of physical geography. Now second division of the geography based on systematic approaches, principles and philosophy. So principles and philosophy as the name suggests, they study the development of the subject. Okay, they study the philosophical background or the philosophical base of the subject. Again here the philosophy and principle part has been divided into two parts. That is, first is geographical thought that studies the development of that subject. That how geography has been developed since uh, the times of Greeks until the postmodern era and how the geography has faced number of ups and downs in its development. So thought portion is totally an historical aspect and how the subject has been developed in the uh, course of time. The next branch of principles and philosophy is human ecology. Okay, it's a very important branch and it is very important subject at the present point of view. So basically human ecology studies the interaction Okay, the interaction between the land or the earth surface and humans. Its cultural lands landscape, its economic landscape and its social landscape. That when the man or when the human interacts with the surface, when he or she lives on that particular surface, then what type of interaction or what type of landscape he develops. This comes under the human ecology part. Okay, so the next third branch or the sub branch of systematic geography is the methods and techniques so as the name suggests what methods and techniques do we use while while we study the subject of geography is under this heading so this again is divided into four subdivisions that is cartography quantitative techniques field survey methods and fourth is geoinformatics so what is cartography cartography is the most important part of geography as it deals with the science and art of map making and how do we make maps, how do we take scales, projections, how do we use colors, symbols and different typologies while making map. Next subdivisions is quantitative techniques. So since 1950s geography has been revolutionized with the quantitative techniques or the empirical studies. Now geography is just not about the quality that how it is and the, it is more or less but by the efforts of few prominent geographers like P Peter Haggett or R.J. Corley. Okay, the methods and techniques have been re revolutionized in the particular subject. Like number of statistical methods, number of mathematical models have been introduced in the study of geography. Like locational analysis, Christoller's theory, Weber's theory, okay, Loss location, location model, Hoover's theory. So all these theories are based on the mathematical or statistical analysis. So this becomes an important aspect or an important method or approach to study the subject. Third sub-branch of methods and techniques is the field survey methods. Field survey is very important in geography, okay, because geography is a spatial science, okay, is a science of regions, is a science of area and we cannot study about an area without visiting that area, okay. So if we want to study about an area, okay, if you will see that satellites and other things, that is a different part that we will study further in the fourth sub-branch. Satellite data and sat satellite analysis to requires ground truth verification. Okay, so for studying geography, it becomes necessary for a geographer to go on field, to go on ground and study and do his uh, research or do his analysis. Okay, so moving on the fourth part, the fourth part of methods and techniques is the geoinformatics. So basically what is geoinformatics? Taking out information about the earth is known as geoinformatics. It is a very simple definition to understand. So now this information is derived or is taken by number of methods and most importantly the technology is used here okay so here again geoinformatics has been classified into three sub branches that is the gis gps and lis gis or the geographic information system that is the future of geography or that is the future of the human now every each or the other industry or the sector has to incorporate the gis in its operations 
it is very important aspect it's a very important technology for the human kind second is gps that is global positioning systems again it is very important you can see your location you can see yourself on the map you are able to order your food in your at your home if you are able to order online your equipments or the gadgets or clothes and it is getting delivered to your home it is because of gps that is global positioning systems so again it is a very important technology and the third is li that is land information systems which studies a satellite based remote sensing so the three basic elements of geoinformatics is gis gps and lis or remote sensing now the fourth part of the systematic geography is the human geography here we study the human aspect on the earth surface so now human geography is now further divided into many parts the first part is social cultural geography here we study the social elements or the cultural elements the cultural aspect the civilization aspects of the particular area or the particular people living in a particular area second is historical geography so historical geography studies the historical processes through which a particular area or a particular space is getting organized every area has undergone several historical aspects has several several historical experiences before they have achieved this particular status or particular scenario so historical geography studies all those evolutionary part all those things that have been changing through the time the next branch is the population and settlements it studies the population aspects and the settlements settlement geography can be further divided into rural geography or the urban geography it studies the various aspects of rural as well as urban areas next branch is the political geography it studies the political aspects or the geopolitics last branch is the economic geography it studies the activities it studies the human activities or the economic activities that are done by human now economic geography is again divided into six parts that is agriculture geography industrial geography tourism geography trade and transport infrastructure and services so while we are studying economic part or the economic aspects economic geography then we study all these things in that particular region so basically this was all about the uh, human geography now there is third more branch of this uh, human uh, this systematic approach of of geography it is the interface between physical geography and the human geography okay it is an interface so this interface this 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 area of interface is termed as biogeography and is again divided into four parts that is ecology that is the interaction between abiotic and biotic components of this environment the plant geography or the study of plants the environment geography the study of environment and the fourth is zoo geography that is study of fauna part or the animal part on this so basically if we uh, try to summarize this branch so on the basis of systematic approach geography can be divided into four parts physical principles and philosophy methods and techniques and human geography and these branches have been subdivided into several parts that we have discussed earlier and the interface between physical and human geography is termed as the interface biogeography so now we have studied all the systems we have studied all the physical elements we have studied the human elements we have studied the bio elements we have studied the techniques so if we apply these all the elements this whole systematic approach into a particular region it may be a small region it may be a large region then it will be it will give rise to the regional approach or the regional part of this subject so now regional geography or the regional approach of studying geography is again divided into four parts that is regional studies regional development regional analysis and regional planning the first is regional studies we will study the region that what are the aspects what are the elements or what are the things the pattern the density the distribution of various aspect that we have studied in systematic geography in a particular region so a region can be a macro region a meso region or a micro region so depending upon the size of the region the regional study will be done second is regional development now we'll see the how the developed this particular region is the particular level of development in that particular region further seeing the development we will do the regional analysis we will try to analyze the shortcomings the good things or the bad things in that particular region and after the analysis portion the last we will do the planning part we will make policies we will make frameworks we will make laws in to improve or to adjust the things that we have studied in analysis okay so regional planning can be done in two aspects that is the rural planning and the urban planning so this was the regional part of geography or the regional approach of studying geography 
so basically the things that the systems that we have studied in system systematic geography or the laws the theories the approaches the techniques that we have studied in systematic part if we apply this in a particular region that is the regional part of geography so that was the video guys and thank you for watching see you soon take care jai hind